Damn it, how long have we been doing this show? The Wrestling Life. Hey everybody, it's The Wrestling Life. It's episode 328. It is an Illumination Chamber slash Battle in the Valley preview show. I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. Liam, we have so much to talk about this week. And as always, so many things we can't talk about on the first and only wrestling podcast. WWE has a pay-per-view premium live event coming up this Saturday. It's the Elimination Chamber. It's the final stop on the road to WrestleMania before WrestleMania. And New Japan Pro Wrestling is going head-to-head the same night because we just can't have nice things. Uh, So WWE kicks off at 8. New Japan kicks off their pre-show at 8.40. It was at 9.20, and now they moved it to 8.40. And uh, their their main card kicks off at 10. So we're pretty much wall-to-wall wrestling from 8 p.m. Saturday to, like, 1 a.m. Saturday at least. And uh, there's a lot to talk about here. So let's start by previewing the Elimination Chamber show this Saturday. And I personally would like to thank WWE for doing absolutely nothing on their Monday Night Raw program this week. It made my job a lot easier. (laughs) They just punted an entire three-hour program. And they gave us a Becky Lynch, Bianca Belair, uh, somebody else, main event. Bailey. (laughs) Bailey main event. I'm sorry, Pam. (laughs) I'm Pammy third place. Oh, Lord. It's just destiny. (laughs) (laughs) He's this generation's leader. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, yeah, so they had a, a main event that they that they put some stakes on, and then they just didn't deliver anything at all. It turns out the entire show, you didn't have to watch it. Uh, nice little match there at the main event, but um, uh, any thoughts on uh, WWE Raw this week? Uh, not really, based as as you just kind of laid out. They didn't try very hard. Um, <laughs> the the big. I think the only noteworthy thing coming out of it was the Cody and Sami Zayn promo. And yeah. I guess there's a little bit of discourse of people. There's, I guess there is a contingent of people wrestling, wrestling pundits who think that if Sammy loses, that's a mistake. And that that could hurt Cody going for the title at mania. If, because people will be disappointed that he's not Sammy. Um, I don't think that's that type of fan exists in WWE anymore. <laughs> like, I think they ran them all off. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, they're either not watching it all anymore or they're, you know, watching other stuff. So I don't think that the days of hijacking the shows are uh, are long over. And it's not it's not quite the same as like trying to put Batista in Daniel Bryan's spot either. Like right. people really like Cody. <laughs> yeah. So. I don't think it's really a, a one-to-one comparison. But if you if your argument is, well, it's a better story because Sammy is the hotter baby face and the hottest baby face you have is the one that should beat Roman Reigns, that's a different argument. But ultimately, I think you can you can have your cake and eat it too. You can have Kevin Owens come out and save Sammy after he loses, and then you set up the the Owens and Zane versus Usos match that I think everybody's expecting. And then you have Cody, Cody go for Roman and, you know, Cody's Cody's whole quest is about the belt and Sammy's is not. So you can also go back to Sammy and Roman sometime down the line and let Sammy get his win once Roman has already dropped the belt. And I don't think that hurts Sammy either. So as we're we're approaching uh nine hundred some days with the championship now for uh Roman, it's just foregone conclusion he's dropping the title. You still believe that? God, I think I just wanna believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean it's it's a little bit like Triple H being the champion anytime from like two thousand two to two thousand nine. Yeah. Like it would never be a surprise if he just wins. <laughs> Right. If he just keeps the belt for another year. But gosh, it's the it's the time. It's we're probably way past time, but we're really feels like now's the time. And that if anything was going to hurt Cody, losing to Roman would I think cool him off substantially. 
um, right. because he doesn't feel like just another guy. And if he just loses like everybody else does to Roman, then he is. Yeah. Yeah. No argument there. Um, would you talking about the Roman and Sammy and Cody discourse? Would you go so far as to insert uh, Sammy into the match as a three way at Mania? Um, I think we've already established that you wouldn't, but uh, because you don't believe that the backlash that people are fearing can exist. But just for clarification, do we do a three way here? Do we have Cody beat Sammy on the road for WrestleMania? Do we have Cody promise Sammy the first shot after Mania? Do we do anything? To pay lip service to Sammy, or do we just uh, beat him on Saturday? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think, yeah, you can, you can definitely have Cody promise him the first shot or whatever. Um, like, I don't think it would be a, a terrible idea to, to do a three way, but I also think that waters down everything. <laughs> sure, <laughs> like if because if Roman does drop the belts in a three way to Cody or Sammy for that matter. Uh, I think it waters it down because it's not a one-on-one match. And if Cody wins the belts by pinning Sammy, well, that's lame. And like, I don't know, like to me, it just, it, it's, it's, uh, it's creating problems that don't currently exist. I feel like if you, if you put Sammy in the match, because then maybe you are inviting people to choose, <laughs> whether they're going to cheer for Cody and cheer for Sammy. Whereas right now they seem pretty content to cheer for both of them. So yeah. um, Yeah. I think, I think I would just have Sammy lose and then I would have Roman lose the belts to Cody. And then yeah, down the line, you can do Cody versus Sammy. You can, and you can go like, like I said, like you can go back to maybe at SummerSlam, you can do Roman and Roman and Sammy one-on-one again. And Sammy can get his big win. If, if he still feels like he's on fire and he's, you know, a big top baby face by that point. So yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't think you need to overthink this. I think uh, it's, it's probably best in this case that they do just stay the course. All right. The car for the program, Bobby Lashley versus Brock Lesnar. Mm, is this uh, the, the, the smallest Brock Lesnar has ever felt? Um, as far as just being in a match on a a show, yeah, it hasn't. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's just because he's wrestled this guy a bunch already, or and generally the Brock the Brock stuff feels like a happening, and this just feels like yeah, he's he's a wrestler on the show having a match. Um, I I don't know. It doesn't. It, yeah, it doesn't feel it doesn't feel particularly important. Maybe if they do like the hurt business official reunion and they all beat up Brock and leave him laying and you set up a a hotter mania rematch. Maybe there's something to that, but as of now, yeah, this feels pretty cold. The grit couple edge and Beth Phoenix. If I never hear that, I I like both those people. And if I never hear that phrase again, it'll be too soon. The great couple edge and Beth Phoenix taking on the judgment days, Finn Bauer and Rhea Ripley with Damian priest and Dominic Mysterio in the corner. Um, have we talked about how Dom Mysterio has gotten himself over as a heel, which <laughs> I did not think was po- humanly possible? Yeah, I don't, uh, you know, I didn't expect it, certainly. Like, <laughs> sure, but he's turned, they've done a very good job of turning the weaknesses into strengths <laughs> for him, yeah. And like, yeah, he's still, the, he's not going to be it, or he shouldn't be like a world champion, but yeah, he's a guy who people want to see get his ass kicked now and eventually they're going to get to see his dad <laughs> his dad <laughs> beat him up and uh that's that's wonderful so good for him for finding a role that works for him after like three years of being one of the worst people on the roster <laughs> uh thoughts on uh uncle adam and uh aunt beth and betty <laughs> I mean, Rhea's wrestling Charlotte at for the title and won the Royal Rumble, so I guess she should win here. I guess. Um, but then it's like, well, what do you do with Edge and Beth for WrestleMania? I don't know. <laughs> well, maybe Beth just goes away. But then, like, I guess you could go, you could build the like Edge and Finn in one more singles match or something, or Judgment Day could get another woman and they could do. 
Finn and that person against Edge and Beth, I guess. Where, as you mentioned, or as we, I think, hypothesized on a recent show, well, if they were going to put Bray and Alexa back together, they'll need a, uh, a mixed a mix tag couple to wrestle. And you uh, know, we know how Edge loves the uh, lore and, and dramatic, yes, <laughs> dramatic storylines involving him showing off his incredible acting range. Oh, I totally forgot those, pe- those human beings existed. <laughs> Oh, Edge that's... talking about Uncle Howdy. Oh, that's got to be the match. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, two Illumination Chamber matches on this show. One is for a shot at Bianca Belair's Raw Women's title at WrestleMania, and it's Asuka, Liv Morgan, Nikki Cross, Raquel Rodriguez, Natalia, and Carmella in the match. Um, realistically, who has a shot? Asuka, Liv, Raquel. And uh, I assume that this is Raquel because the plan was Raquel uh, a month ago. What do you think? Yeah, I guess. I mean, the repackaged Asuka feels like like if you were going to go with the people that people care most about and yep i don't think they've have they done bianca and oscar in a singles i know they did like a three way with becky back mm-hmm. last year but i don't think it was ever like a program so that like, that i that, could be wrong yeah so like that still feels like that could be fresh especially if you have oscar playing a little bit more of an overt heel and could maybe give a little bit of an edge to the bianca character who has been treading water for about 18 months now. <laughs> She's a smiling, happy, dancing baby face. Mm-hmm. So if you have the the vicious killer coming after her, maybe that allows her to uh, spread her wings a little bit too. So that's who I would go with. But yeah, I mean, it seems like you know, Raquel's Raquel's going to happen. <laughs> like, yep. We've decided that uh, Raquel uh Ra- Raquel Rodriguez and Austin Theory are going to be main eventers in this company. And it doesn't (laughs) matter if the crowd responds to them or not, because everyone in power is going to tell you that they're great and that they're getting over and that they're a superstar waiting to happen. So why not? I don't know that. um, I guess we talk about this now as we have the elimination chamber match for the United States championship with, Montez Ford, Damian Priest, Bronson Reed, John Gargano, Seth freaking Rollins challenging Austin Theory for his United States title inside the chamber. I will say, Theory's changed up his look a little bit. Um, They don't put him in 14 segments on every show anymore. I'm not saying I see it now, but I'm saying maybe this push is going better than it was Oh, I don't know, four months ago. <laughs> a low bar, but that's fair. Um, <laughs> to me, it's still just he comes out and nobody makes any noise. <laughs> sure. Like, they turn the hair dryers on. Yeah. Nobody nobody cares about this guy. And again, maybe you could you can fake it till you make it, and maybe that'll work out. Um, he's obviously a good athlete. He has potential, I suppose, but I just I just don't Again, they're they have given up on people. Again, maybe you could say that was the old regime or whatever, but they've given up on guys with far more upside, I think, than Austin Theory has. And yet here we are and in going into year two of his uh his <laughs> uh his being on on the show and main eventing a raw like three out of the four <laughs> weeks of every month. Yeah. Um, having a match with eight chin locks, and I'm just kind of not yeah. a not a fan, but again, you can if you tell people enough times that he's going to be a future superstar, I think maybe that'll be true. And maybe, you know, it just feels it feels a little bit like if you ever if you go back and watch Triple H in like 1999 and they're like, okay. this is the guy. He's the top guy now. Mm-hmm. And we're like and everyone was like, mm, well, I don't think we really see him in that way. <laughs> But they were just like, no, no, he's going to be the top guy. And he so he was for a year and a half. And then he went out for a little while. And when he came back, he was this giant over baby face because eventually it clicked. And the audience said, OK, yeah, he is going to be a top guy. And 
So maybe that will happen with Austin Theory too. Mm, maybe so. Um, I think let... Triple H was better than Austin Theory. Just to be clear, I'm not saying they're okay of all like, right good comparable skill or <laughs> or overness. Uh, like, you, but I think there's a co- there's a comparison to be made as taking a guy that they want to be a top guy and kind of forcing the issue, even though the crowd's not ready for it. Oh, I gotcha. I gotcha. That makes sense. Uh, I thought you were doing the Bret Hart thing. Mm-hmm. You're like, where you're like, Triple H is not even one of the 500 greatest wrestlers I've ever seen. <laughs> not quite. He's not top 500. <laughs> <laughs> like, really, Bret? 500? He's no Whipper Billy Watson, you know? It's <laughs> no Molina. That's right. <laughs> Oh boy! And then up uh, the main event of this show is uh, Roman Reigns defending the undisputed Universal Title against Sami Zayn. We've already talked about this. We assume this is leading to Sami and Kevin versus the Usos at Mania. We assume Sami's not beating Roman. We assume maybe he'll get a visual pinfall of some sort. Uh, but uh, Roman Reigns beating Sami in Montreal. You know, think of the heat, brother. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any get, other? Yeah, uh, go ahead. I was going to say the only I think the only interesting thing or the intrigue is how do they beat him? Yes. Like, does he just lose clean? That's always a possibility. <laughs> do they have Jay? Is, is this whole Jay business been a swerve and he's going to turn on Sammy? Can Jay get into the country? <laughs> I could <laughs> that could put a wrinkle in this. Jimmy's the one that has the uh, the sordid past, though, right? Is Jimmy married to Naomi? Yes. Yes. Then it's Jimmy who definitely okay. probably can't get in the country. But Jay but, probably can. So you I could so. you could do the uh, the big swerve there and have Jay go back with with Roman, and uh, and then that would put some some fuel on the fire for why Sammy would want to fight fight Jay and, and Jimmy instead of uh instead of Roman going forward and I I did like the way that they set this you know what I'm thinking now that they did set this up um on SmackDown last week when they had uh Jay and uh and they did the angle with Jay and Sammy and then Paul told uh Jimmy I believe hey stay home and watch the show on TV next week mm-hmm. <laughs> so they've already made the, the They've already shot the angle to explain his absence the weekend of. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't even know where SmackDown is. Seems like it would be in Detroit or something. But uh, yeah, anyway, they were just in Detroit. Anyway, yeah, they've already they've already shot the angle for uh, for that. Sorry, uh, did I cut you off? No, I think that was that was kind of in my thought. It was just that either Sammy loses clean and then Kevin saves him from the beatdown, or Sammy. As you said, gets. I mean, he could get the visual pinfall either way, but Sammy is about to win. But then the one guy he thought from the bloodline that was in his corner turns on him, and uh, and Roman wins that way. And then you you still get to the point where Kevin, you know, where Kevin comes out and, and saves him, and you get the two home down boys standing tall to end the show. That, that uh, yeah, that makes sense. Let me um. Let's see, SmackDown is uh, also in Montreal. Ah, and then yeah, and then they're in Ottawa for Raw, I think. Yeah, that's correct. So yeah, Jimmy's Jimmy's gonna be home. <laughs> yeah, for the next few shows. So, but if, <laughs> but assuming Jay, we're not forgetting a Jay uh, incident. I don't think so. I don't think you could do this match or this angle without him. So, yeah. All right. Well, there we go. Okay. Um. Any other WWE loose ends here? Baron Corbin fired JBL. JBL actually JBL fired Baron Corbin. <laughs> they decided to protect the guy who's going home and not mm-hmm. the guy who's on TV every week. Classic. Uh, hey, if this leads to more, but you know, like bad luck Corbin or sad Baron Corbin or whatever that character's name was, uh, mm-hmm. I think I think that's good. Agreed. Agreed. That was that was his finest hour as a performer. Yes. Um, my only other thought was I saw people were complaining that people uh, that Braun Breaker is getting booed on NXT now. And yeah. I saw some people saying, well, it's because that 
that audience at the performance center is terrible. And then I saw some people that said, actually, it's because he hasn't improved at all and he's been champion for a year. So do you have a, a take on that one way or the other? I think Braun has maybe been overexposed being on that television every week pretty much for a year. Um, I watch that show every week. I have not watched this week's episode yet. I uh, since I I now have Tuesdays off. Ooh. Uh I don't um watch the show live every week. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I watch it on like Wednesday night or Thursday night. So we're taping this Thursday night. I'm going to watch it later tonight. But anyway, none of this matters. I don't think he was on the show this week. But um I think he is kind of limited they give him a lot of WWE verbiage in his promos, which doesn't help. This guy's like, you know, he doesn't really have a defined gimmick. I was I remember arguing with my coworker one time about like, well, his gimmick is he's a he's a shooter. And they're like, is that the gimmick? <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like, well, maybe not shooter, but like amateur wrestler or something. Mm-hmm. It's, it's legit not- tough guy. Right, it's not really defined, so they've never really defined his his gimmick is like, hey, remember my dad and uncle <laughs> were a tag team thirty years ago, but I don't have their same last name. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I th- I think there's, um, I don't I don't think it's booing as much as apathy. Uh, although you know who knows what trickery they're using with uh with uh turning the sound down or or whatever there but um i also could see the argument that, yeah he hasn't grown um he still only has like 65 matches in his <laughs> career or something right <laughs> um and he he was always just kind of a um i mean he's better at this stage than bill goldberg was but it's very much the same kind of feeling of okay this is just like an untrained <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> unleashed uh wildebeest in there anything could happen Mm he um so i don't know i like him i could see why people are 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 not happy with where he is after a year but also they've done him no favors um keeping him there for a year and putting him in programs with guys who suck and (laughs) giving him promos with a lot of wwe verbiage instead of Mm -hmm. Instead of, uh, you know, just go out there and keep it short, sweet, do a five minute match, go to the back. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, I saw the uh, they're, they're advertising him versus gender for the show uh, in the next week or two. So that'll that'll solve this. Gender will get in there and teach him how to work. He's getting a win on the way to uh, Carmelo Hayes at uh, the Mania Weekend show. Yeah. Yeah. Gender. Gender the recliner. <laughs> Ginger, the uh, the thumbs up guy, is gonna <laughs> let Gorilla know if this kid can work or not. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when I before I got married and I lived in an apartment, we had these two beautiful leather recliners in the <laughs> in the in the apartment, and they just remind me of Ginger Mahal in every way. Um, <laughs> the co- the color, their immob- their immobility. <laughs> wonderful yeah so there we go all right um battle in jim valley is the same night uh, a new japan pro wrestling battle for jim valley um i think that's the name of the show is saturday night it's at uh 8 40 eastern uh that's the pre-show which is on youtube and fight tv fight tv for free there's two free matches on the pre-show here's what they're trying to the the, they're going to they want you to get real excited for the show by seeing Alex Coughlin, Alex Coughlin wrestle J.R. Kratos mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and uh, ha- watch David Finley wrestle Bob Fish. Oof. Those are your pre-show bouts. Wee! <laughs> <laughs> I will say I like a lot of this card. Uh, yeah, it looks like a pretty fun show. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's run down real quick. Uh, eight man tag: Mascara Dorada, Josh Alexander, Adrian Quest, Rocky Romero versus Kushida, Volador Jr., who's out of his mind, <laughs> Kevin Knight, and the DKC. 
Uh, nice little fast paced opener there. Um, Fred Rosser versus Kenta for the strong open weight championship. I don't know if Kenta's going to do the job for Fred mm-hmm. for a guy named Fred. <laughs> But uh, okay, they should at the very least. This should be hard hitting, I would think. Uh, yeah, not, not that Kenta, Kenta quite has the same <laughs> fastball that he had in his younger years, but he can still, uh, you know, chop and kick with the best of them. And uh, I, I saw Fred Rosser win the strong championship <laughs> last yeah. year in Philadelphia. Sure, and uh, you know the guy can take some punishment. I can tell you that. And uh, so did I watching him wrestle for 40 (laughs) minutes. Just kidding. It was fine. (laughs) But it did go a very long time. Makes sense. Uh, The Motor City Machine Guns will be facing the West Coast Wrecking Crews, Jarrell Nelson and Royce Isaacs. The uh, Machine Guns have the strong tag team titles. So this is a match for that. Uh, um, Two good teams there. Did mm-hmm. you know that uh, Jarrell Nelson and Royce Isaacs do the uh, some of the motion capture for the WWE 2K games? I don't think I knew that. No. There you go. Uh, Jay White versus Eddie Kingston. Loser leaves New Japan Pro Wrestling. This comes a week after Jay White lost a loser leaves Japan match against Hikaleo. Sure seems like it's it for Jay White in New Japan. Mm-hmm. And if he were just going to AEW, would they do a Loser Leaves New Japan <laughs> stip for him? Doesn't seem like you would have to. Or that you would have to stipulate he can never wrestle in Japan again. Right. <laughs> like, uh, I don't know. Unless this is just some some 5D chess and they're trying to throw throw people off the scent by convincing everyone he's going to WWE by doing this, but I don't know. It's like if he was if he was just going to AEW, it feels like uh, you know you could you would leave that door open for him to come back and wrestle a big show here and there. He's a guy. Here's a guy who's been on <laughs> AEW television before. He's been on the AEW pay per view uh, and the Forbidden Door pay per view. Mm-hmm. Um, he's friends with um some of the guys in that uh, in that in the uh, in the elite mm-hmm. this they allegedly tried to recruit him when they were starting the company and yet all signs point to WWE interesting i i think regal uh is the one responsible for this <laughs> i see william regal's fingerprints all over this and boy they must be opening the checkbook is are my two conclusions what do you think yeah i mean it seems like uh it's one of those things where you go to AEW, you are you it's maybe a known beast. I think Jay is a big enough talent that he's a guy Tony would make room for on the show every week, you know, like mm-hmm. he did when Adam Cole came in. Yeah. I don't think he'd be a lost in the shuffle guy. Um but if on the other hand you're like, well, you can go to WWE and you'll probably be on Raw right away, I would think. And boy, Cody's going to need some heels to wrestle all summer, isn't he? <laughs> Assuming sure. he with whether he wins the belt or not, you're going to need some some other heels if Roman's not going to be around. Uh, and and Cody is your your de facto top baby face. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, it seems like this would be the perfect time. And then yeah, as, when it comes down to the money, I'm sure WWE can be very persuasive. And yeah, he seems like a guy who would be right up uh, Regal and and Hunter's alley for that matter he can talk he has a bit more of a deliberate style (laughs) sure and uh yeah i think i think wwe probably makes sense to like it's gonna bum me out when he's feuding with the miz in two months but (laughs) i don't i it's hard to blame the guy like if there was a perfect time for him to jump to wwe and give it a go he's also not he's not 38 like balor and a lot of these other guys are when they or when they made their jump, like he he can be in WWE for three years and still have plenty of time to, you know, to go to AEW or back to New Japan or wherever he wants to go. Yeah, yeah. While we're uh, touching on, uh, uh, by the oh, right. Um, 
here's what I know about William Regal and I. We have the exact same taste in wrestlers. <laughs> <laughs> He's like Sasha Banks. I, it's just the first person I ever went to bat for in WWE. I told them if she doesn't make it, you can fire me. Mm-hmm. He, he's like uh, Tony Storm needs to be hired. Uh, she knows what she's doing. He goes to uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, Tegan Knox. He goes, mm-hmm. she also knows exactly what she's doing. She needs to be hired. Everyone out there. Hire her. I love Jay White. I think he's a better wrestler than Ric Flair. And, <laughs> uh, and I, so I'm sure Regal. Uh, also thinks very highly mm-hmm. of Jay. So there we go. Yeah, I just want to put myself over. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. Yeah, Regal, Regal does have a pretty strong batting average. Like, I don't think Kevin Owens gets hired without him. Like, probably so. Going to those PWG shows and making the introduction, and by extension, probably Sami Zayn as well. Yep. And they're about to, they'll probably main event night one of WrestleMania against the Usos. So, like, they're, you know, he's got a pretty strong batting average. So if he's going to the bat for Jay White, like, yeah, that's uh, that's, that's rarefied air. Uh, while we're uh, briefly touching here on WWE developmental type things, uh, did you want to do your bit about uh, <laughs> Natty and TJ running a workhorse <laughs> fitness wrestling school there in Florida? Well, yeah, you see what they do is they've uh, they've they've created a wrestling school so that they can teach everyone uh, who came through the performance center, how to wrestle because at the performance center, you don't learn how to wrestle. You learn how to do calisthenics while Albert yells at you. <laughs> and uh, so when they're done with that and they're on TV and they look like deer in headlights, then you send them to TJ and Natty and, uh, and they make them into actual wrestlers. <laughs> Cause like Angelo Dawkins was on WWE developmental for like a 30 <laughs> years. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. He- <laughs> and he was fine <laughs> but then he's been working with tj for six months or whatever and he's like noticeably better <laughs> he, had, he had a really good match with damian priest on raw two weeks ago and everybody's like what the hell happened to angelo dawkins <laughs> like he looked competent mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, like, it's invitation only so i think natty and tj pick like 14 people or 12 mm-hmm. people and they bring it's not like 800 people in a warehouse it's 12 people in their garage mm-hmm. and i know that they've worked with b fab who mm-hmm. went through wwe developmental and yet they didn't trust her to, they didn't trust putting her in a wrestling ring <laughs> until the royal rumble this year and even then they gave her like 45 seconds mm-hmm. <laughs> uh but i know b fab they've worked with i know tiffany stratton they worked with and tiffany stratton is really good Mm -hmm. (laughs) she's really good so uh and she took like uh, five months off to have some elective surgery and has come back and looked better somehow so yeah big props to annette and tj down there Um, yeah glad somebody (laughs) (laughs) someone's teaching the crew how to work yeah good to know good (laughs) you spend 10 years lifting weights and (laughs) getting yelled at by albert and sarah del rey and then (laughs) And then TJ and Natty might might take you under their wing and actually teach you how to work at some point. Yeah, it's it's quite the eclectic crew. Like there's some AEW job guys mm-hmm. in there. There's a couple of odd performance center people. There's a couple of rent. They have to notice that you suck, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> and then they invite you over. Ah. <sighs> I could just the garage thing. Like I, I don't know. It's a garage in Florida. I hope it's air conditioned. I don't think hope it so. is. But <laughs> ugh. anyway, back to this New Japan battle, <laughs> battle for Jim Valley show. Um, the top four matches: Filthy Tom Lawler versus Homicide in a Filthy Rules fight. I assume it's just a street fight. I don't know who could possibly care. Uh, Zack Saber Jr. defending the NJPW World TV title against Clark Connors. My only problem with the TV title, other than the New Japan, the last thing they needed to do was add another title, mm-hmm. um, is 15 minute time limits. Uh, not that I need to see Clark Connors wrestle for 20 minutes, although Clark's pretty good. Mm-hmm. But uh, the 15 minute time limit, I don't, I like what title has a 15 minute time limit? <laughs> well, it's like if you were going to do 15 minutes, then it should be on like 
Mascara Dorada, <laughs> right? Like you would where, think where it's just going to be boom, boom, boom. It should be like a it should be like an, another never belt where you can give it to like a junior heavyweight that could just go out there and, and do crazy. Stuff. Like give it to El Desperado or somebody like, right. It's just going to go out there and do crazy stuff for 15 minutes and have a, a great sprint. Whereas like Zack Sabre's matches by default are, you know, slow and, and plotting and they, you know, they move at the pace that, you know, and not that there is an urgency and there is an intensity to what he does, but it's just, it's not a, a fast paced 10 minute match style. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. That's my problem. That's my problem with that title. All right. We have a double main event on this show <laughs> and I, I can't wait for the discourse. I can't uh, wait for the podcasters. I was going to say the only reason they're calling this a, is a double main event is because they're afraid, right? <laughs> I guess. They're I don't know that, that the podcasters and, and stands are, <laughs> are going to yell at them. They should be. <laughs> Tell you what. I don't know. All right. So the two ma- the two final matches on the show are the singles match for the IWGP Women's Championship. Kyrie defending against Mercedes Money. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and Kazuchika Okada defending the I- IWGP World Heavyweight title against Hiroshi Tanahashi. Mm-hmm. On one hand... You have the two biggest names in New Japan Pro Wrestling of the last two decades, mm-hmm. Okada and Tanahashi. It's the classic match of a generation. They haven't had a title match in, I think it's four or five years. Uh, I think they've had a G1 match or two. Mm-hmm. On the other hand, you have Mercedes Money's New Japan debut. You have the women that sold this show out when it was the only match announced for the show, whether it would have sold out or not anyway, is something that I refuse to contribute to that discourse. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Irie and Mercedes or Okada and Tanahashi. I cannot imagine New Japan not putting Okada and Tanahashi on last. I can imagine the backlash for not putting Kyrie and Mercedes on last. I I think there will be yeah, there will be there will be discourse <laughs> <laughs> regardless. Um personally, I think um if you have a match featuring the two greatest wrestlers of of their generations possibly of all time, that should generally <laughs> go on last. And while I am a fan of both Kyrie and Mercedes, they are not the two greatest wrestlers that have ever lived. <laughs> so I would put Okada and Tanahashi on last. But to your point, a lot of people that bought tickets to the show, seemingly based on the timing of when the show sold out, bought tickets to see Kyrie and Mercedes. So, you know, I'm not, I'm not interested in arguing with anyone over this. <laughs> but also, I think it's ridiculous to be mad that you went on second to last behind the two greatest wrestlers who have ever lived. Here's I. Here's what I would say. I would be upset if I were Kyrie and Mercedes, mm-hmm. even though it is the two greatest wrestlers of all time. I would be upset and I would say, all right. And knowing I don't know Mercedes, but uh, <laughs> I just caught myself. It's like, well, well, knowing Mercedes, I would think that her reaction would be. Mm-hmm. But what we know of Mercedes Monet, mm-hmm. this is going to be a chip on her shoulder. Mm-hmm. She's going to take it as a personal affront and she's going to respond. It's like, all right, well, you guys go out there and steal the show. And on your way back, you go to Tanahashi and you say, top that. And maybe 46-year-old Tanahashi, who lost his three front teeth biting into a protein bar last week (laughs) and cannot climb into the ring because he's so physically beaten down by the New Japan schedule, maybe they won't be able to follow it. Seems unlikely because even like in their sleep or in wheelchairs, I feel like Hokata and Tanahashi could have a four-star match. Mm -hmm. But... 
go out and prove them wrong. Go out and steal the show and prove them wrong. Right. I mean, that's the old story of, uh, was it, was it the Heart Foundation and Rockers or somebody? It's like, tell you what, they aren't going to put you on early ever again. <laughs> like, yeah. go out yeah. there and, yeah, if, if you think you should be the main event, you have a great chance to uh, to force New Japan's hand going forward if if you have this knockdown, drag out, incredible match and even Okada and Tanahashi can't follow it. That is quite the feather in your cap. So, hey, there's... It will be fun. I think it'll be fun uh, regardless. But yes, there will be. Oh, there will be discourse. <laughs> there sure will. Um, anything less than a four-star match from Mercedes and Kyrie feels like a disappointment, no? Yeah, I mean, it's 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 a big... Uh, this, is, this is Mercedes' first match in, what, nine months? Yeah. And obviously she's been working very hard. It's not like she hasn't been in the ring in nine months, but getting out there in front of a crowd, I think the crowd will be so into this match that they will, they're not going to have to beg (laughs) for a crowd reaction. Like I think the crowd will make this a great match maybe before the bell rings. Um, That would be really nice. And if that's the case, and knowing how talented both of those women are. And I think Kyrie, like it's it's a big deal for Kyrie too. I, I saw her post like this is the first time she's wrestled in front of fans in the United States in like four years. <laughs> so there's like it's a big deal for her too. And I think she also um doesn't want to be number two. <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh to anybody uh in stardom or New Japan or wherever else she might work. Yeah. So I think she will also want to make it clear that she is still the top woman in that company. And so, yeah, I think it's, I think it'll, it's exciting. And yeah, I think the crowd, the atmosphere for it, I think will be awesome <laughs> regardless of if it goes on second to last or last. That is a uh, battle in Jim Valley. <laughs> All right. AEW. Um, Speaking of punting, well, I can't say that an AEW has ever really punted a show uh, because they fit as much as they can into every program. But mm-hmm. they're on the road to revolution. They have. Um, I will say, though, that, that uh, the, the AEW TV numbers the last three weeks have been down, down, down. And. Um, this. This. This week's show did not feel like uh, must-see television, but they have Revolution coming up the first week of March. It was a weak lineup this week, um, and uh, they but they did make some matches official for Revolution. They have Samoa Joe and Wardlow for the TNT title. They have Moxley and Hangman in a Texas death match. They have a four-way for the tag titles, and MJF versus Danielson in an Iron Man match is official. Um, any thoughts on AEW television this week? Yeah, it was a pretty uh pretty skippable show. Um it was there wasn't anything that stood out as like well, that's not true. I was gonna say there wasn't anything bad, but uh Soraya and Tony pulling the fan out of the crowd was terrible. Um uh, <laughs> but uh no, like the show wasn't awful, but uh it didn't have anything that felt particularly uh, new like when you have a show and two of your segments are sit down interviews with guys like it's and you can say that hey you're sacrificing this week's rating because hey if people watched that Wardlow interview um uh, maybe they're more invested in in him versus Joe now the people that did stick around and you know and 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 watch those interview segments or the the angles they shot those those people will be more invested and perhaps more likely to buy uh you know to buy the pay-per-view um that's school thought we'll see <laughs> we'll see if the you know if the number comes back up i i know there's a certain philosophy in that company that everyone's going to make their decision within like the last 24 hours before the show so it doesn't matter when we announce the matches until week of um i think it's pretty clear what's going on you did you had christian's return which was unannounced you had 
Uh, you said, like you said, you set up a couple other matches. Uh, unclear to me what the what the women's match will be on this show. <laughs> um, yeah, I you would I guess it could be Jamie defending against Ruby and Soraya. Maybe I've heard it's Jamie against Soraya. Okay, um, I don't know if that's the case, but that's what right. I heard. That's yeah, that, that's a possibility. And then you have I. I guess I would I maybe you set up Ruby for like a TV match afterwards or something, but um but yeah, so they they'll they'll figure out something to do with that. <laughs> and uh and I guess there was there was some spooky House of Black lore mm-hmm. during the Elite's uh, little interview segment where they set up their rampage match. So there's your trios match. They're doing like a they're doing they're doing this thing. AEW's done this before. Where they they do two battle royals like back to back weeks, yeah, and one's a regular battle royal and one's a royal rumble uh, or casino, yeah, battle royal, and then both of those teams are going to face the guns, but also the acclaimed are going to be in it, uh, because yeah. because they have a rematch clause reasons reasons which yeah. I I didn't know those existed in AEW. <laughs> Because why yeah. didn't why didn't John Moxley invoke his rematch clause to uh to uh, yeah. wrestle MJF again? Anyone who's ever lost the world title has never like immediately gone and gotten a rematch. Mm-mm. It's but, always just like turn the page. Yeah, but uh, I guess maybe that's new. Maybe they'll they'll start doing more uh, rematches on television going forward, or maybe they just I don't. You could have just had the acclaimed win one of the battle royals. <laughs> To get this title match, if you want the acclaimed in a rematch with the uh, with them, and then uh, gosh, yeah, but then you could only do a three way on the show, and you wouldn't be able to get two more people on the show, right? So there you go. And then uh, I don't know; they'll probably throw an Orange Cassidy match, maybe on the pre show. Like maybe seems maybe, likely. God, do him and Jared in a singles. Let's just let's go, man. Yeah, what are we waiting for? Let's do uh, Paul Rudd and Orange Cassidy. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Uh, uh, do we need to have a conversation about the elite uh, running television viewers off? Um, they got they got they had an eighteen minute match two weeks ago, and like a hundred thousand people turned the television off. That's fair. Yeah, I mean, I I can. I guess the the counter argument would be, well, nobody thought they were going to lose to AR Fox and and Top Flight, so it's because they had weak opponents. That's the that's if I were arguing pro elite, sure for that. That's and that's a fair argument. But then, uh, why do you book matches against guys who they have no chance of losing to? Why do you book non competitive matches every week? That's fair. Uh, that's <laughs> we're just point counterpointing here. Um, sure. Uh, but, yes, <laughs> I, I guess I, I think it is a valid criticism to say since they've come back they and since the best of seven finished on whatever that was the first week of January, um, they haven't had a feud like they've wrestled on TV a few times since then. Yeah, but they're just having matches with teams that no one thinks can beat them and so a lack of a lack of story behind the match and a lack of strong opponent, uh, I think has hurt them. And then yeah, maybe it's just that people aren't into the, these guys as a trio because it's like Kenny as the world champion a couple of years ago was a very you know solid you know viewership mover as, as the world champion. Like all of his stuff drew pretty well. So. It's not like I don't think he they've they've run off a big portion of their audience or there's like some pro CM Punk contingent that's tuning out every time the elite have a match. I just think it's like it doesn't feel like they're part of anything particularly must see, even though the matches have all been good. Um, yeah, it doesn't feel it doesn't feel like they're a, a particular hot act in there. And I don't I think that's kind of a, a fair critique of of recent AEW television is that there doesn't feel like there's a a hot act on this television. The, there's been some hot matches, you know, the the Roosh and Brian Danielson match uh, on last week's show I thought was phenomenal. Um, 
There's but... like a seven week stretch there where Danielson had a singles match every week, and mm-hmm. like six out of the seven, Brian Cage being the exception, were uh, were bangers. Absolutely. So like, there's, but it doesn't feel like there's a ton of steam behind anything, even the one program that has been building since like December, that being the MJF Danielson one, uh, it just doesn't feel like a, like there's anything particularly hot. doesn't feel like there's a particularly hot act on the show. Maybe when you get, you know, maybe Adam Cole getting back in the ring will be a, a bigger deal. They did tease that again this week. So um, better, it better be Adam Cole and MJF after the pay-per-view. That's, what, that's, that's, that's my takeaway. Yeah, absolutely. I I think maybe his first match back. I thought, based on his promo, because he's he's a good guy. He's a nice guy, uh, Adam. Now, yeah. Um, I think maybe his first match should be against Mark Briscoe. Oh. Um, maybe mm. you do that either on on Revolution or on TV. Um, just knowing how much you know that that seems like it would be special. Um, maybe not a great use. <laughs> of adam cole if you're trying to like draw a television number with them but uh you, you could get a, you get a beat mark briscoe though i feel like he's a guy that can lose i mean maybe maybe he shouldn't lose yet um i don't, I don't think yet but i see where i see where you're going with that though it's a we could you know reasonable people can disagree <laughs> reasonably that's fair but uh but uh yeah i think i so you could do that but yeah i think i would think double or nothing should be main evented by adam cole and mjf and i know that's a big thing that uh that uncle dave has been has been hammering them about recently is that they don't have like a clear top baby face now that moxley is in the middle of the show with the hangman thing there is no (laughs) AEW has no protagonist currently um and why isn't it brian though like <laughs> he's this beloved guy mm-hmm. he has great matches every week i just feel like they haven't done a good job of explaining maybe he needs more promo time i don't know yeah i think that would help i mean he cut that one promo where he was in the trainer's room and he tried to connect it and be like yeah and you know you've hurt me and you've hurt you know, people that I care about, but so I'm going to come and I'm going to hurt you by taking that belt. Cause that's the only thing you care about. But that was like a 30 second promo on a, on a show. And then we, we to the back or to the ring right yeah. from it. And yeah, he hasn't really talked since then. And I, quite frankly, I've been very underwhelmed by MJF on the other side <laughs> of, of this, this whole exchange. It's, it just feels like more of the same. He doesn't feel like a, a tippy top act right now to me either. So yeah, it's just, it's maybe a combination of, uh, of a few things, but yeah, it just doesn't feel like there's a, a central baby face character for people to get behind on AEW television right now. Um, and maybe that's also a, a, a factor of why, you know, they were down a 120,000 viewers this week or something. What do you think of the decision to take the uh, tag titles off? He claimed, I wouldn't <laughs> <laughs> like they, they are speaking of acts that have moved numbers. They have with the exception of that guns match, which did die a death uh, as the main event the previous week. Uh, they have generally seen, they seem to be an act that people care about. You look at, if you want to use like crowd response and merchandise as a barometer, there's more acclaimed signs and merch in the stands at AEW every week than anybody else by far. Um, and so if you were going to beat them, I probably would not have Billy Gunn's dickhead sons do it. <laughs> um, to your point, and you did, you did point out to me off the air, well, they beat FTR. They've kind of tried to serious them up a little bit over the last couple of months, they aren't quite the same comedy figures they were a year ago, but it still didn't feel like they were on the acclaimed level. And so, Hey, but I guess the argument would be, well, if they're ever going to be on that level, then they need to beat top guys to get there. So maybe this is more about elevating the guns than it is about, you know, thinking about what's best for the acclaimed in this case. But I would argue that, the acclaimed are your hottest act on your show every week that they should not be losing to anyone, let alone the gun club. 
what happened to the tag team division? These were the only two teams left in it. <laughs> uh, trios belts, right? <laughs> I guess. Like they're doing that tag team battle royal this week. It's like the teams under the Butcher and the Blade, uh, the best friends. Uh, it's just it doesn't feel like anybody that could that could possibly. It's like, all right, well they broke up Swerve and Keith, mm-hmm. and uh, Keith has been on TV in a month and a half. And uh, Swerve is wrestling Dustin Rhodes on Rampage. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like, well, that was a team, and now they're not a team. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't know. I don't like, I don't like AEW's booking. <laughs> <laughs> I know there's been an issue where, well, speaking, they were in the trios division. I think Pac's going to be out for a while, and then I think there was like a Visa issue with the Lucha Brothers or something. Yeah, yeah there's but a they... lot of Visa problems in wrestling right now. So or there were, I think they, they, those two were specifically got theirs resolved because they were on TV this week. Right. So maybe they end up in this four way match. Yeah. Because yes, they, that they are desperately needed. I think on this show to give it some life, especially in that tag division right now. So um, that's a team you want back. And then, yeah, they, <laughs> they've broken up a lot of other teams. So, uh, or, or those teams are, are now in, in the trios division. So, it's it's solvable problems. It's just you know we're we're still flying by the seat of our pants, and you got to show show Wednesday and a show Friday, and then you got to book your YouTube shows, and now you're booking ROH, and all of a sudden you haven't you have like three teams in your tag division, <laughs> at least three teams that people care about. Anyway. Right, right, right. All right. Well, anything else you want to talk about? No, I think we've we've we have run the gamut this week. <laughs> We spanned the globe. This was supposed to be a quick show. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> Sorry. Famous last words. <laughs> Sorry. Hey, uh, breaking news here. Uh, next week's Impact Wrestling, Tommy Dreamer will be wrestling in a Beat the Clock Challenge. Oh. <laughs> he's, still, he's still doing him and Bubba Ray as a feud? Um, I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Bubba Ray, I know, is going to wrestle Tyrus for the NWA <laughs> World Heavyweight Championship. <laughs> everyone's made everyone's made this joke but Bubba Ray in a suit looks so much like Alex Jones it was striking I saw the I saw the 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 joke and I was like wow did Alex Jones go do an angle <laughs> and I was like oh no it was actually Bubba Ray uh, uh Tyrus uh got on a Super Bowl commercial naturally mm-hmm. holding the NWA World's Championship so yeah hey that'll definitely lead to more than eight people buying their next pay-per-view. Yep. Definitely a great product that needs to exist. And is not about money laundering. <laughs> Seriously. It's just laundering, smashing pumpkins money. <laughs> you would have to assume, but it did lead to uh, the former Alex Riley doing the funniest dive I've ever seen. So net positive, I think for the wrestling business, <laughs> Kevin Owens is screaming in his face. Rage. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. I remember after he, he beat, uh, Alex Riley in their big grudge match and I think Balor comes down to run him off. Kevin is running away and Alex is out on the floor selling and as he's running by, Kevin Owens just stops and kicks just kicks Riley in the chest and then keeps running. <laughs> <laughs> just bullied that man out of out of WWE. Wonderful. Alright everybody, till next time, I'm Ethan. And I'm Liam. We'll be back soon with more stories from the wrestling life. Adios. Thanks for listening. Don't forget to leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. Now, here are this week's bonus features. Uh, I have to go write about The Rock's daughter losing her last name. (laughs) Oh, I didn't hear that. She just Ava now? Correct. Oh, well, I, I don't I don't want to I don't want to keep you, but like Rock doing no, like no. a five minute Instagram about Jerry Jarrett. I was like, <laughs> what a fascinating like that's the stuff that is fascinating to me. That's like as much of a robot person as he is, as much as a space alien as he is at this point. Yes. He's like, if you helped him in his in his career, he doesn't forget that. Yeah. <laughs> and he will he will go out of his way to say good things about you. Like that's why he's doing Ken Shamrock's (laughs) 
Instagram or uh, uh, Hall of Fame induction. That's why he's putting over Brett in random interviews while Emily Blunt sits there politely. <laughs> yes. Like when he gets an opportunity <laughs> to talk about somebody that helped him, he will go on and on about how 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 much he appreciates it. And it's like, okay, that's like, maybe that's like the last little nugget of Dwayne that's still a real person. That and he uh, he has to pretend to get along with Hunter now, but he can bury Shawn Michaels still oh. by completely replacing him in Young Rock <laughs> with, a char- with a character named Chad Frost. <laughs> Chad Frost. I swear. That's incredible. That's like a level of petty that I aspire to be. <laughs> That's incredible. And like WWE like co-produces that show, don't they? Yes, because they wanted to use like footage and characters and stuff. So yeah, WWE has got a credit on it. Yeah. Oh, that's incredible. Shawn Michaels does not exist in Young Rock, but Chad Frost does. <laughs> I, I heartbreaker, I, Chad Frost. It's the greatest. <laughs> I love that. I I thought they maybe had buried the hatchet because like when they blackmailed the rock to come back and induct his grandpa and his dad into the <laughs> Hall of Fame, he was like because for years she's like, no, I have no desire to ever work with Shawn Michaels. And then when like that 2006, 2007, 2008 mm-hmm. era, he's like, yeah, well, maybe Shawn Michaels, maybe Randy Orton. You know, I'd like to work with those guys at some point. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, apparently did not bury the hatchet because he's been Chad Prosted. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember in his induction speech being like, oh, yeah, I would I would wrestle. I would wrestle Shawn Michaels. He would go up for the rock bottom so easily. <laughs> <laughs> So he's a man. He kind of got like a dig in on it, even though he's putting him over as a guy he would wrestle. Right. That's the greatest. <laughs> uh, but no, yeah, I've raised my right hand and swore to uphold the Constitution while, uh, you know, anytime I stamp a document that says I saw someone sign it. <laughs> I was like, All right, we're taking this just a tad bit too seriously for what the... Uh, for what it is that I'm doing. But then again, when I was doing the training for it, I would say about, it was just a bunch of videos you had to watch and then a test at the end. And I would say about a quarter of them were, here's what you are not, (laughs) here's what this does not allow you to do. You are not a judge. You are not a justice (laughs) of the peace. You are not a lawyer. (laughs) You don't make any sort of legal rulings over anything. (laughs) You're just going to stamp a thing that says you watched this person sign the document. That is literally all you're doing. <laughs> so apparently this is something that needs explaining uh, for, for some of the folks who, who come through, uh, through the very prestigious notary school uh, that I, that I uh, went, went to. Nice. <clears throat> Just tying this to uh uh i know it comes in handy i uh worked with uh one of the most naturally funny people i've ever met in my entire life uh name is marina chase she's a uh, mid-50s african-american lady Mm -hmm. uh she had more education than any of us uh at uh, at the credit union but um was just working a regular job like the rest of us and um she should have been the manager but anyway she was a notary and uh, I know that, that people would come to her all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's the, the, that's a uh, it's definitely a good uh, thing to have on a resume, I think. And like, mm-hmm. especially if you start looking for other jobs in the industry that I'm already in. Sure. <laughs> like, oh, that's already checked off, so we don't have to worry about getting them that when they start. Yeah. So, yeah, I just, just thought that there's a bit more pomp and circumstance than I was expecting for. <laughs> Raise your right hand. <laughs> yeah. I was like, should I have brought a, a holy book? <laughs> yes. I was hoping she would offer me one. I'd be like, could I be sworn in on the Quran, please? <laughs> <laughs> this is my faith. Do you have a Torah that I could uh, <laughs> could borrow here at the... Yes, at the at the at the courthouse. I need a copy of Scientology Monthly. <laughs> sure. Um, 
I think of my former notary coworker almost every day because um, one of her phrases when you couldn't swear out loud in a, in a office was uh, that is some bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> So every day at some point, I'm like, that is some bullshiggity right there. <laughs> bullshiggity. It's tremendous. There's like only a certain demographic of person <laughs> could say that and have it actually be kind of funny and cool. Yes. Yes. But uh, yeah, I can see why that stuck with you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, my beverage tonight is Gatorade Fast Twitch. Hmm. I have. Is this? Is a Gatorade in a can? It's uh, in a small plastic bottle. Huh. It is a new Gatorade energy drink. Um, I believe I've tried all four flavors now. Um, the one I tried first was orange, and it tasted uh, vaguely like um, uh, rhinoceros piss. <laughs> And then the other three have all tasted pretty good. Okay. So just don't get the orange one if you decide to like this. Really noted. <laughs> Gatorade mm-hmm. getting in on the energy drink thing. That feels like maybe it's about 10 years too late, right? Yeah. They should have been jumping in when like Coca-Cola and Mountain Dew and all those people. Yes. While well, the soft drinks started getting in on the, yes. on the energy drink front. Yes, 100%. A hundred percent. I guess the whole the yeah the thing is it has caffeine and electrolytes. Ah, it's like yes. well, uh, uh, okay, but um, yeah. So the uh, the ingredients are like uh, water, citric acid to make it sour, uh, salt, um, and then like juices, like carrot juice, mm. pine pineapple juice. It tastes pretty good. Not gonna lie. All right, there. That's great. Fun, fun thing about electrolytes: no one knows what they are. Correct. Yes, not even a notary. No, not even. <laughs> <laughs> As evidenced by this conversation, <laughs> is there such thing as a notary private? Uh, it's a good question. <laughs> I'd like. Alex, is that if you're a, if you're a low ranking member of the U.S. Army and also a notary? <laughs> Perhaps so. I do all my notarizing in private. No, no, no witnesses. Well, <laughs> part of part of the part of the process is that there is a witness. No, no, <laughs> that's a notary public. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. <laughs> notary private, you just gotta trust them. <laughs> it's a lot of vibes. <laughs> <laughs> he does his notarizing mainly on vibes. <laughs> <laughs> that that doesn't that doesn't sound legal. <laughs> I sort of vibes that the vibes were good. <laughs> so what's that? <laughs> I say, yeah. I say, you you certify that the vibes were good. <laughs> <laughs> you know that would be helpful, actually. <laughs> I want to remember this night. <laughs> The vibes were, in fact, good. I had them notarized. (laughs) I try to keep on keeping on.